everybody. I do not even know how to start this video. I don't know how to jump into it. I don't really know how this is gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> so bear with me, I might be scatterbrained. I'm gonna try to do things in somewhat of a organized fashion, I guess. Very first off, I just wanna say that I'm sorry if you can hear cars driving by. Um, you're like sitting right in my window basically and my window's open, just ignore that. Next, um, I wanna make it very clear what my purpose in doing this video is. My purpose is to share my experience with YWAM, also known as Youth With Admission. It's not to bash the organization, it's not to bash my base, it's not to bash um, any of the leadership at my base. It's also not to get any sympathy. It's just simply to share my story, talk about the hard things that people don't want to talk about. I'm also sharing it because I, before I did YWAM, searched extensively for videos. There's a lot of things that you can like read on the internet about this, um, but quite frankly, before my DTS, I tried to look up videos and there wasn't anything like this. Anyway, yeah, again, also I'm sharing my story. Um, everybody's story is different, but I'm sharing my personal story. Um, and I personally know and have heard of several others that do have stories similar to mine. That's that, there's my little disclaimers. I was born and raised in a Christian home. I've gone to the same church my entire life. I go to non-denominational church. I graduated from a private Christian school. My point is, I'm not new to Christianity. I'm not new to the Bible. I'm not a new believer. You know, and I've had a relationship with Jesus for as long as I can remember. Um, I did my DTS in September of 2019. I graduated high school in 2019, um, and then I knew that college was right for me, but I knew that it wasn't right then, um, and I've just really had a heart for missions, and I had heard about YWAM um, and decided that it looked super, super cool um, and just something that I would really be interested in. I can't remember if I applied right before graduation or right after, it doesn't really matter, but I applied around that time um, in 2019, and I got accepted right away. I went to a base in Washington State. I don't think it's really necessary to say exactly which base it wasn't huge like if you're familiar in the ywam community you obviously know that like kona and newcastle those are really big bases it was nothing like that uh but it also wasn't tiny my dts had f like 40 ish students i believe um so it was a good size let's just start this thing i guess so when i got to ywam i was super super excited i was just very much ready to um meet some people that were had similar values to mine. Um, I was really excited to learn more about God and grow in my relationship with him. I was super, super stoked for outreach. Just all of it, I was really excited for all of it. The first three weeks of my DTS were good. Quickly, I started to get very close with the people in my DTS. That's what happens when you live in community like that, when you're literally doing every single thing together. That is what happens. You do get close with people very quickly. I loved the atmosphere i loved the community on the third week we had a um week that was called father heart of god week um and all of the staff had been kind of like telling us that like oh my gosh everybody's gonna cry on this week this is the most emotional week this is the most crazy week this is the most intense week one morning um during that week of lecture we walked into the classroom and there was a circle of chairs um sitting around the room and basically what happened was it was like a confession circle for seven and a half hours straight we sat there everybody in the circle was sharing like their deepest darkest things that either they had done or that had been done to them i am not kidding when i say that it was seven and a half hours straight we sat there but in the midst of that circle um our speaker told us that he was going to be hearing directly from god um in regards to everybody's situation every single speaker um that i'm going to be talking about is currently involved in YWAM. At least they were when I was in my DTS. Anyway, so this particular speaker, um, when people started sharing, he would hear from God in regards to their situation and then he would speak for God um, to that person. And it was in front of the entire group. The thing that really troubled me with that was he was cussing a lot it just bothered me because if a pastor did that from a pulpit they would be completely reprimanded just getting in people's faces and screaming curse words and supposedly that was from God so 
that was my very first red flag that week in our small group small group is you know where you are in a smaller setting um i had two leaders and then i think there was like six um students six girls in my small group and we just would kind of talk about a lecture that week and so she asked us how we thought this week went and i was pretty honest and i just straight up said you know the cussing really bothered me i don't understand why that was necessary her response to me was well you shouldn't be bothered by that sometimes it's necessary um, for the intensity of a situation and i was very unsettled by that response also need to or want to address um, a couple things that happened my first week of dts but it wasn't until later that i kind of processed them and realized that they like were not really okay the very first week of our lectures we had a week on um hearing the voice of god or discerning the voice of god or something like that it was one of those she made it very clear that we should never use the word of god or the idea of like god told me to manipulate that first week we did an exercise um and we it was basically testing if we were hearing from god correctly and they were basically testing us to see if we could properly hear from god um and what we did is we all stood in a circle um and faced the outside of the circle and they called one person to the middle um, without us knowing and then we had to ask God for a word that described them. The amount of anxiety that that gave me <laughs> was a lot because here you are in front of your entire school first of all and your leaders that you're looking up to and it's your first week there and you you know like trying to find your place or whatever and you have to describe this person from a word that God gives you. I felt very convicted of that. Um, I felt like I was playing a game with God. Another example of this is um, several times throughout our DTS, we were told that you um, had a certain amount of time from here from to hear from God on a specific topic. They would be like, you have 20 minutes to go pray and hear from God on this or you have five minutes to hear from God on this. Um, literally one time, actually more than one time, we were told we had 30 seconds to hear from God about a specific person. And I just don't understand why you're putting God on a timetable like that. You know, God is outside of time. God does not work at our snap of a finger or at our demand, but there was an extreme amount of pressure that you had to hear something from the Lord. And if you didn't, you weren't connected to the Holy Spirit you didn't have the ability to hear from God, um, things like that. And so eventually for me, it came to the point where I was like pulling stuff out of my butt so I didn't look like a fool. And I was very confused, like, why am I not hearing from the Lord on this? I don't know if this is a thing at like all bases or if this is just the thing at the base that I was at. Intercessory prayer always had to include um, visions or pictures um, from God. And sometimes people would just get up there and say like, I got a white rose and I have no idea what it means. That was just something that was really disturbing to me was like people would get these words from God but or these images from God, but then they had no idea what they meant. There was also times when we were told that we um, had to sit and get a picture or a vision from God. And um, that was also really bothersome to me. I will say this, I do believe that God most definitely 100% speaks through visions and pictures and dreams and all that sort of thing. However, I don't believe he speaks to everybody that way. I believe that he can speak in whichever way he chooses to whoever, whenever. Um, and that kind of goes in line with the time thing. Like, I don't think that it's right to put God on a timetable. I don't think it's right to tell God, you have to speak to me this way. In YWAM, you have a one-on-one, -on -one, which um, you are assigned them um, your first week and you have to meet with your one-on-one -on -one every week for a certain amount of time and if you don't do that then you cannot graduate DTS um, and what you're supposed to do is basically you're supposed to tell them everything my one-on-one -on -one, nothing against her personally you know I think it's the way that YOM has told their staff to act and told their staff to be is the reason that they're like this my one-on-one -on -one had just done her DTS one year prior. So, you know, she was probably replicating what her 
one-on-one uh, -on -one did for her. I would honestly try to avoid my meetings if I could because I felt so tense and just questioned about every single thing I was doing, every single thing I was feeling, and God told her that I was supposed to come back for the secondary school. I was distraught because my I didn't know how my family was going to react like or react to that and that I had to do it before I went home for Thanksgiving break and she literally told me you have to do it now before you get out of this bubble. A staff member was calling it a bubble, which scared me. I really felt that if I was supposed to go back for secondary school, God would tell me I wanted to go to college after YWAM. I did not want to continue down the path of, like I did not want to stay in YWAM. That was never my intention. Along the same lines, I had another um, staff member tell me that God told him that I was to come back and do secondary school and that I was eventually supposed to staff. It finally got to the point where I was like really questioning like, okay, is, jo is, <laughs> is God just going to speak to others about my life? And you know, like when, so when more than one person is telling you the same thing um, and that God told them, it starts to make you question like, okay, well maybe that really is God. But in my heart, I never felt like I was supposed to do that. And so it was like really conflicting. One week we had um, a like mini lecture thing. One of our own staff um, was doing it. She straight up told us that she, I have it quoted, I'm gonna read it. She said, your leaders aren't leading because they're more mature or wiser. They're leading because they said yes to coming back to YWAM. I really felt like I was more spiritually mature than like 90% of the staff at my base. The people that were leading us were most of them ranged from like 20 to 25, but they would also openly say like, I've only been saved for a year or two. Um, and there were my leaders. And then when she said that, I was like, well, no wonder I feel that way. I guess it's because it's true. <laughs> that same little session thing, they also told us that, I also have this quoted, she said, talking with people about things is gossip and you're sinning against God if you say that you're processing it's gossiping. I remember so clearly after that was said, our entire DTS went like silent. And um, we all went back to our room and we literally like sat in our beds and like people weren't even talking because we were just told that like if we talked about things or like shared our feelings about things or um, processed things, then we were told that we were literally sinning against God. And so it put a huge amount of fear of talking and processing about things. They also would tell us quite often that um, our families and friends back home wouldn't understand what we were going through. Something else that was really drilled into your head was that if you weren't doing foreign missions, you were basically less than. Also during my DTS, we had a speaker that um, quite literally forced us to find things that our parents find ways that our parents had done us wrong. I was brought up in a great home um, with great parents, obviously not perfect, but I really did have a great childhood and upbringing. And I just did not understand the biblical purpose of trying to nitpick your parents and find ways that they have done you wrong. Obviously, yes, not everybody has the same home background as me, but like, it really made me mad like why we were doing that. And then the same speaker in front of the entire school told me <laughs> that while my mom was pregnant with me, my parents rejected me and that I um, have just dealt with rejection since I was in the womb. And although it wasn't true, that does create some sort of emotional thing in you and it creates a lot of questions, you know, um, because supposedly these people are always hearing from the Lord and they're speaking directly what God's telling them. So all of these things um, started like piling up. Um, I started to get really bad anxiety while I was there. Um, I never dealt with anxiety before, um, but I developed it while I was there and it got to the point where I would get physically sick. I cried myself to sleep almost every single night. I began to feel very, very trapped. Um, and like I had no escape. We found out our outreach locations and I was super excited. I was assigned to go to Thailand. Thailand had been on my heart for, it's been on my heart for like five years. Um, and so I was super excited to go. Then I found out um, who my leaders were and it was two leaders. Um, one of them is 23, one of them is 21. Um, 
one of them has been saved for like one year and one of them has been saved for a couple years it just really scared me um because quite frankly i didn't trust one of them for other reasons that i'm not gonna go into the other leader i literally never had a conversation with her oh one other thing that i forgot to add was um during lecture phase um we went through two books of the bible and um like on our own and we had to journal about them and then we had to turn them into our small group leader and we would get a grade that like was part of our graduation thing and so that began in like insecurity in me of like well if i don't like interpret this well enough then like one i have less knowledge of the bible two i might not graduate one of the speakers also told me in front of the entire class that my parents were never proud of me um growing up this was one of the times where we were in a circle and he told us that he was hearing from god and that he was speaking on behalf of god and he told me that and i was like and that created a lot of questioning in me also so the last week of lecture phase things went downhill super 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 fast we began to be told that we had to follow our leaders no matter what um they told us to blindly follow your leaders even if you know that they're wrong if you know in your heart that something's wrong what in the world why would you do it we also had a speaker tell us that we were not allowed to bring our bible um into class we had a speaker tell us that he was going to be adding on to the bible all of the stuff and everything and speakers were telling us that we couldn't tell our home churches or our families or our parents about what was going on and i just knew that this was like wrong and going downhill very quickly i'm not going to say that ywam is a cult i'm also not going to say that it isn't however things i'll link a resource down below but a huge thing of cults is when they say you cannot talk to people outside of this community this circle there was a point um during one of the lectures where i just got super um anxious i basically was like about to have a panic attack and so i left i went to the bathroom um and i began praying long story short i had a leader come in and tell me that um i was not allowed to leave that i had to sit in there and that um it was a completely inappropriate time to pray and i was just baffled i was like i'm getting reprimanded by another christian for praying it just emphasized once again that them hearing from god and hearing the voice of god always trumps what the holy spirit is communicating to you i got super scared at that point i already felt unsafe emotionally but at that point i felt very unsafe spiritually i ended up going home three days before i was supposed to leave for thailand i had gone to my base leader more than once before i left expressing some of my concerns and all i got in return was excuses for the ways that things were being done and just like i'm sorry you feel that way it made me feel um like my emotions and my feelings and my discernment and everything was just wrong one of my best friends also left they called a meeting for the whole entire school and they took she and i into a room with everybody and they said faith and so and so are not going to be going on outreach and like that was it that was that and i was sitting there like sobbing my eyes out and like nobody did anything and it was honestly like the most embarrassing humiliating thing that i've ever gone through because um i'm about to cry <laughs> because i so badly wanted to go to thailand um i wanted to go but i knew that it was not right to go i knew that i couldn't go under that kind of leadership um and i just felt so unsafe right after that um we had a meeting and so my friend and i were gonna sit in on it and the leadership literally said like what are you doing you can't be here you don't belong in this meeting anymore go pack your bags to go home and i was like wow okay so i was there for two and a half more days i was quite literally shunned by every single staff member what was going to be my orange leader had my passport and she would not even come give it to me she gave it to another student to give to me i had a two and a half hour drive to the airport and i contacted um my base leader and said hey i need help getting to the airport could you help me i was completely ignored something else that was really concerning to um myself and my family after i came back home was my mom did 
um, an extensive amount of research um, in order to try and talk to somebody that was higher up than my base, someone that my base was accountable to, um, and there was no one. There is no one that the base or the leadership is accountable to um, that they could tell us or that we could find. I am not bitter toward them. I'm not angry at them. I've forgiven them. However, that doesn't mean that I'm not still heartbroken. My heart definitely does hurt still. Also, I came home almost five months ago. I just wanted to say that. Um, I came home at the beginning of December. Um, so yeah, I've been home for almost five months and been processing all of this. When I got home, things got worse quickly for me. I went into a downward spiral. I came home very angry. Um, I was extremely disappointed. I was heartbroken. I was very confused. I was feeling so many emotions so strongly and I didn't understand why. Um, quite frankly, I still don't understand why I felt all of it so strongly. I came home just very worried about the people that stayed um, because I was seeing some of them quite literally before my eyes be brainwashed and believe everything that was being taught. It was so unbiblical. I would ask for a biblical reference to things and they told me they couldn't give me any. When I came home, I was just so spent and exhausted in every way possible. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, I was just drained. I am not someone that like, I never cried in front of people ever toward the end of me being in YWAM and when I came home, I was literally in a constant state of crying. I could not gather myself. I was just so confused and exhausted and I didn't know how to process anything. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know if I made the right decision coming home. And I felt very guilty coming home um, because the entire DTS, they made a big emphasis of like, people have donated so much for you to be here. So coming home, I felt like I was disappointing everybody. And I also, was like stripped from the community of YWAM. I will say this, it's great to be surrounded by like-minded people that are the same age as you, that want to pursue Jesus like you want to pursue Jesus. But to live in an environment like that is very unrealistic. Like that's not the real world. I came home with the expectation that like, that's how life was going to be here and it just wasn't. YWAM is not the real world. It's just, you're in a bubble. It's really, it's really an unrealistic way of living. I was just such a wreck. I was just so emotional. I got very depressed very quickly. I couldn't even think about why I am without just like sobbing or being like very angry. And so it got to the point where I just stuffed, stuffed, stuffed because I didn't want to feel those feelings anymore. But I didn't know how to deal with them. Um, so I just stuffed them down, wouldn't allow myself to think about it. I have a lot of triggers now. I get flashbacks to it a lot. Like, almost daily something will like transport me back to a moment some moments that I hadn't even thought of in a long time sadly there's worship songs that I can't even listen to anymore because um, it's a trigger um, there's certain words and phrases that I can't say anymore because it's a trigger like I said being back home I just got super um, depressed I couldn't sleep at night just very restless my mind was constantly racing. I came back questioning everything. I came back home questioning my parents. I came back home questioning God himself. I literally questioned the existence of God after I had been in a DTS like this. Um, I questioned God's goodness a lot. I questioned myself. Um, I questioned every, I just, so many questions because so much like trust and authority issues happened. I'm definitely still in the process of um healing it's hard to navigate all of it i know that this video was like super scattered and i'm sorry but i hope that this can give just a little bit of insight to someone or to someone that's already been through ywam and you're watching this um and you've experienced something similar like you're not alone um at all i know i felt that way when i was coming home i guess that's it for this video um if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll link my Instagram down below. You can DM me. Um, you can email me. 
Um, I'll also put my email down there. I'd be happy to answer questions or talk more in depth about things, certain topics or whatever. Any of you guys would like that.